Hello everyone. Today in this uh, video on this channel, we're going to be talking about inventions. And that's um, when you have an invention, when you have a product that you want to kind of custom design, when you have a product idea and you want to get it uh, to work. That's what I mean with invention. It doesn't have to be, you know, the next electric car or the next iPhone or the next, you know, futuristic kind of thing. It just has to be something that doesn't exist in the marketplace yet. Something that maybe you have it on your mind for some time. You did some drawings, you did some drafts. And now you want to put your plans into reality. And the easiest way or the most affordable way or perhaps the only possible way to get your invention done is to have it produced in China. So now you're thinking about, okay, what do I have to do if I want to get my product that only exists on paper for now produced in China. It can be something really simple and really easy where you just have something where you're changing the shape or how certain components fit together. That can cause problems, uh, a lot of problems actually, when you are looking out to source this in China. Because the Chinese are very, 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 very good at duplicating the same process over and over and over again, exactly the same way. That's, that's why the Chinese are so good at mass producing your products. What is a little bit of a problem here, and that has several reasons, I won't go too deep into all of that. But there's one problem is that if you give someone something new in China, something that hasn't been done before, something that they don't have a reference point from, it's really, really, really hard to get it done because people have, I always call it like illiterate thinking, let me tell you a story, <laughs> okay? Just just to kind of get, get the thinking explained to you. So for example, if I go and I get a coffee and I go to a coffee shop and um, I want to get some work done, I have my computer with me and I also want to eat. So I go to the shop and I, and I ask them, hey, do you have Wi-Fi? Sure, we have Wi-Fi. You go sit down, get your coffee, computer up, Wi-Fi doesn't work. So I ask the guy, I say, hey, what's, what's, what's up with the Wi-Fi? He said, oh, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. So what do you mean it doesn't work? Yeah, it doesn't work because, um, yeah, I don't know. It has a problem, it doesn't work. My assumption when I ask, do you have Wi-Fi, is that it works. The guy in the shop took it literally and says, yes, we have we have the router, we have the, the Wi-Fi in the shop. It doesn't work today though, right? But that wasn't what I was asking. I was asking, do you have Wi-Fi, not is your Wi-Fi working? This mentality causes a lot of misunderstanding. That was for, for Wi-Fi. That was nothing, nothing complicated, nothing fancy. Now imagine that when you have an invention when there are multiple different parts that are not exactly clear how they fit together, where you have different materials perhaps combined, where you don't know what's the best way in creating this, where you can't give the factory or the supplier an exact way of combining different materials or the way to cut out different things or the exact dimensions that, that, that the product should have. A lot of times the supplier has to, has to put their own sorts into it it has a bit of, a, of an issue. It's all possible, it's all been done before. We are doing this all the time. I'm here in China, in Shenzhen. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe because we're talking all about uh, sourcing, selling and profiting from your private label product. And we have a sourcing agency here on the ground in China. So we deal with those custom projects all the time. The very first thing that I always like to get straight when I'm speaking on the phone to new clients is to kind of set the expectations, to kind of set the expectations straight on how long it's actually going to take. Because if you have someone in China, and I believe you, you cannot do it if you don't have anyone in China. If you don't know, if you don't know anyone in China who, who can help you with it, who can visit the factory, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's pretty much impossible. <laughs> okay. The, the, the very first thing when I'm on the phone with clients is to set the expectations. How long is it going to take, right? And, and obviously that varies, depends on what kind of product it is. Us this way we've been done with something like that is perhaps six months. And that was something really simple, something that already existed. Just it was just a product that had to be changed. Where we just where we just, you know, had to change the shape. And he was struggling with that for one and a half years already because he was reaching out to suppliers and he was giving him them them his plans and they tried to do it and they gave him one, one variation and another variation and another variation. And each time they came up with another sample for him. It took a month, right? So he's been over 10, 12 samples and he was not closer to anything that he wanted. But he also had the problem that he didn't exactly know how all the components have to fit together. He was reliant on the factory to make him a suggestion on what's the best solution for the product for his market. That's really the fastest way to failure. If you have an invention, if you have something that you want to get 
really done and produced in China. First of all, it's going to take a year, right? Even though you have someone in China, it, it, it might take a year because there are so many samples that are going back and forth. And the other thing is really that you have to have a proper product design. So if you have an idea and you just have a drawing on paper, well, you have a problem. And that's what a, one of the things that I see most of the time. Most of the people are not prepared enough. If you go out, you have to be prepared. What I mean by that is that you have to have exact mock-ups, exact drawings. If you have, uh, let's say, different cups or glasses or you have different vases or you have bottles that you want to custom, that you want to have a custom shape in, then you have to have a mock-up. Then you have to have a 3D drawing with exact dimensions. Then you have to have... Um, exact specifications on the material, re requirements for how, how these components have to fit together. And all of these things are essential for your supplier to understand what they have to do. If you just put a drawing on paper and, you know, you put like, it should be kind of like this wide and that high, well, that's not going to work. You're going to be running into so many troubles that you're probably going to give up on the way. The second thing to put in the, into consideration besides time is money. So if you're looking into, you know, selling products on Amazon, if you're looking into private labeling products and you say, okay, I have a $5,000 budget, probably it always depends on the product, right? But obviously the money required for those inventions is a lot higher than investment required is a lot higher than it is for your private label products and that is just because you have to make molds you know oftentimes you have to produce tools or the factory has to produce tools for you or molds for you to get your product right because it doesn't exist yet right if you're private labeling a product and and you go down the oem route which means the factory already has a tool they already have a mold they already are producing the the, the the product the way it is you just get your logo on it it's very easy to make that change for the supplier very easy very simple What's not very simple is for the supplier to create another tool because now it's it's not only product design, it's how to fit all the components together, it's how to get the manufacturing process streamlined and they have to get the tools right. And oftentimes they don't do the old tools, they outsource someone making the tools. So they have to speak with that supplier to make the tools. So, so one of the best options if you work with someone in China like our company um, at Easy Peasy Sourcing, we already have... A selection of um, suppliers that can make tools for for different materials right whether that's ceramics whether that's uh, plastics whether that's you know f forged metal like there's there's there are different tools for different purposes and we already have those suppliers right because it's one thing for you to go out and convince your supplier to do it and, and make an agreement and get a good price and get them the process streamlined and have them being able to do it and then they have to go get the tools. So that's another thing to go out and say, hey, now I need the tools to be precise. Of course, it doesn't only depend on the process of the factory making it. It also depends on the tool, how your product is going to be working out. Then it comes to materials. Okay, there comes another another thing that is a little bit um, difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, and I see huge upsides and huge advantages in, in having your own invention, invention and not, not doing the private label thing. Huge advantages, but huge challenges as well. One of those being materials. I see more and more people come in and wanting to have environmental friendly materials, sustainable materials, biodegradable materials. That can cause another problem in China because in China we don't have access to all of those materials. I would, I would say in China you don't have very high quality leathers and you don't have very high quality glass. That's what I would say. That's that's the two things that oftentimes, if you want to have a premium product, you might thinking about, you might have to think about importing it. The same goes for um, sustainable materials in terms of fabrics or plastics that are biodegradable. Had that case actually for and, and, and we lost the client through that is. The client wanted to have biodegradable bags. So we got him a quote for 100% biodegradable bags, meaning the bag falls on the floor, the bag gets, you know, put in the rubbish and the bag biodegrades it, it, it disappears over time right nature takes it back nature claims it back he only had prices in mind for plastic bags he went out to suppliers and he asked for biodegradable bags they quoted him biodegradable bags but his quotes were only quotes for 10 percent biodegradable bags so you throw them away 10 percent dissolves in the nature and 90 percent waste remains he didn't know that so I told him, it's like, look, that's not that's not the, the same thing. Biodegradable, that level, that's two different um, things you're looking at. He wasn't happy with that. He thought he can get 
away with getting the better price and things didn't turn out so well because this listing eventually got suspended um, after he sourced the product from someone else because his his bag wasn't 100 biodegradable and one of the customers or one of the buyers or one of the competitors who knows uh, tested it and found out that it was a fraud that it wasn't that it wasn't right that didn't didn't turn out very well for him but anyway that's that's the thing you have to pay attention to and that's also one of the things where you ask the supplier hey is, is my product sustainable yeah sure it is yeah, like, is it? Same with the Wi-Fi. Do you have Wi-Fi? Yeah, sure. Is it biodegradable? Yeah, sure. You know, you didn't ask me how many percent biodegradable, so you can argue about all of those points. And that's really all of those difficulties combined. I just want to give you the right expectation here. In terms of costs, when you go with us and you ask us to do it, there there is quite some costs involved. It's a little bit more expensive. Or actually, it's a lot more expensive than doing private label products. We're looking at around a thousand, thousand two hundred dollars for us to source private label products with. Obviously, you get a better price. We save you around 20% on the product cost. So if you've ordered, you know, a thousand units at five dollars, it's five thousand dollars as an order value. We save you 20%, which is a thousand dollar, and you pay us a thousand two hundred dollars. So basically, the the, the fee you, you don't pay anything more. Plus, we do the whole thing for you. With inventions, I believe it's impossible to do it yourself. That might be one thing why we're, why we're a bit more expensive. But really, the next thing is the cores. It just takes so much time. It takes so much manpower. It takes so much time. It takes trips to the supplier. It takes endless getting samples from multiple suppliers. It takes knowledge of creating the tool, all of these things. So it depends on the product, obviously. But with that, you're looking at, you know, from $3,000 to $15,000 as something to get started just, just for someone to take care of that for you. And then obviously you have to pay the mold. You know, if you're in ceramics, those molds can cost $300, $400. You know, if you have injection molds, uh, depend on kind of what material it is and all of that stuff, they can be even more expensive. If you have other tools, they can be extremely more expensive so you can look at you know between a thousand dollars and five thousand dollars for molds then there's the actual product that you have to consider oftentimes it's possible to, to to split the mold cost or the tool costs to break that down over the next orders you know so say hey I, i'm ordering a thousand units you have to order a few more units as well and that brings me to the next point is that if you go down that route make sure that you know that your product is going to sell Niels how do you make sure my product is going to sell how do I know like I put it out I hope it sells I hope for the best I think it's a great product but in the end of the day I still got to promote it right so make sure the product is going to sell I'm going to talk about that in a minute now how do you make sure your invention is going to sell because that's mandatory if you go in and if you go through the whole process we're going to talk about the exact steps that you have to go through for for an invention or for getting your invention from china in the next video but make sure to subscribe so you so you can see that but really what what you have to be aware of is that you make sure your product is going to sell just to touch on that you should have a market before that you should have an audience before that, that you can sell to you should have a customer base before you even think about doing that because then you can also go and question and ask your audience about your invention you can say hey i have three different designs for a product idea that we're going to be launching in a year from now or that we're going to be launching soon and and which one do you like better so have your audience interact with you and work with you on your actual product design so that they get a feeling of they created it with you you already get a get a, get them hyped and once the product is there the people that you've been warming up to it and that have been hyped for it over a course of a year they really want it i'm going to go in and do my own invention um, next year and I'm extremely excited for that. And uh, I'm going to have to start building an audience probably starting by now. Because it takes some time to build the audience. So what you want to do is introduce different offers first. Make sure that you exactly understand who is your target customer for your invention. And then go out and build a customer base with exactly that was exactly that target customer. So you want to offer different products first that fit the same customer. So if I want to do a custom product for runners, then I'm going to be launching different products first that can be digital products, that can be physical products, that can be affiliate products from other people, that can be memberships, that can be all kinds of things that my target audience wants, the runner. Then I use that audience to survey them about my invention, about the idea just putting their idea out, say, hey, this is what I'm going to do, putting the drafts out, putting the mock-ups out. And I say, oh, someone's might going to steal that. It's not going to happen. No one's going to steal your invention because, first of all, you're not that well-known. Second of all, the people that see it most likely 
don't have the funds yet or, or don't have the right strategy to follow. If they try it yourself, themselves, and you have someone like our company in China do it for you, you have the huge advantage over them. So you need to have proof that your product is going to be working. So first off, put the drafts out, put the mock-ups out, um, and then introduce your product. Have them give you feedback. Go to influencers with your first samples and say, hey, the product isn't out yet. These are my first samples. Get, get 20 samples of your product. Send them to 20 different influencers. Say, hey, this is my gift for you. This is a secret product that we're going to be launching in, you know probably in a half year from now what do you think about it if you would introduce that to your audience what would you have to change about it what would you think would be better on the product get their feedback have them improve your product they know your target audience a lot better because they're dealing with them for a longer time and then implement that feedback because if you implement the influencers feedback and then you go back to them and you say hey we changed the product for you well they're gonna love you for that right they're gonna love the fact that you change it for them and they're gonna be happy to promote it i'm gonna see you in the next video guys make sure to subscribe make sure to like this video and share this video and ask me any questions you have regarding doing your own adventures in china in the comments contact me anytime there's a there's a link below in the description with my email address so just shoot me an email if you're interested in that if you want to hire us for that or if you just want to get more information about the process in the next video i'm going to be talking about the exact steps how to source your invention in china and i'm also going to be talking about how to launch your own invention and and create your own customer base and all of that thing for the purpose of launching your own invention. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I'll catch you tomorrow.